Hello, Tansi Anin. Good afternoon. Welcome to APTN In Focus. I'm Daryl Stranger. The NHL season is winding down and teams are playing their final regular season games, gearing up for the playoffs. Now, our Hockey Night in Canada in Cree team also wrapped up another season this past weekend and a special visitor helped finish the season strong. We'll get to that in a little bit. Now, today we're looking at our Hockey Night in Canada in Cree broadcasts and specifically how hockey and sport in general can help strengthen Indigenous culture and play a role in reconciliation. Now, we want you to join in on our conversation as always. You can tweet us at APTN in focus, or you can send us an email at infocus at aptn.ca. Now, before I introduce you to our guests, let's start off with a little bit of sights and sounds of what it is like during a Hockey Night in Canada in Cree broadcast. <laughs> My first guest joining me is the Hockey Night in Canada in Cree uh, announcer Clarence Iron. Clarence, thanks so much for, for being here and obviously it's exciting. We've got the cup right here and it's the final game of the season. Uh, my first question for you is just uh, how has the season been for you? Is it exciting to be back after a few years? How's the, would you wrap up the whole season overall? Yeah, well overall everything was pretty good. I know that uh, uh, the last, the third last game that, uh, yeah, I wasn't feeling well at that time, but you know, now my voice is okay. Uh, tonight will be a good game because Ottawa needs to, to try and get in there. They, they need at least three wins to, to get into the wild card. So it's going to be a good game tonight. And overall, this, this year was very, very good. And yeah, hopefully we'll have more. Well, how nice was it to be back? Like I said, the pandemic sort of shut down a few seasons of it. So how nice was it to be back doing this again, finally? Oh, you know, I, I was so excited because our people are, are hungry. Like I always say, the hungry meaning, you know, they want to hear the, the Cree uh, part of the, the play by play. You know, especially watching uh, on social media, some of the elders were in tears. You know, yeah, hearing the the Cree language. It, it's uh, it's something that we we want to carry. We want to keep we want to keep going. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you mentioned the the people love this, and it seems like every year that this is going on, more and more people are getting engaged with this, right? So, what when you go back home and people that you've met or you've met, how are, what's their reaction to Hockey Night in Canada in Cree? Yeah, well, their reaction is very positive. Yeah, they, they, they want us to keep calling. You know, you guys are doing such a good job, especially they want to try in one day even to call a Stanley Cup, you know, finals. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's uh, our, well, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that as well, but even the people, they're asking me, are you going to be calling the Stanley Cup finals? And I told them, well, no, this is going to be our last one, but hopefully in the future it, it, it will happen. Mm -hmm. Well, if it, if it happens or not, hopefully it does, but mm -hmm. how important is it that this is even happening in the first place and that there is NHL games being called in Cree? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, that, uh, it's hard to describe, you know, even to see the Stanley Cup here. I, I myself have seen the Stanley Cup a lot of times because of, we know this in, the involvement here. Plus, I went to, uh, in Toronto directly to, to see this. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for people to come in like today here, they, they see the Stanley Cup, you know, even that lady I just talked to here just today, you know, was, she said she was in tears, you know, to see a Stanley Cup. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's something to see a cup like that. And that's the, the thing that everybody's chasing, you know, this, this cup right here. And, you know, and it's good for us, uh, the First Nations people, you know, carrying this language and, you know, to be able to be involved even, you know, as close as the cup right here. That's, that's something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
No, it shines a lot more than I thought of one of the lights, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what's been your favorite part of, of doing all this? It's been a few seasons now, it's been a few seasons removed as well, but you've done this for a little bit. Now, what's, what's been your favorite part, if you could look back on, on, on it so far? You know, the favorite part would be, you know, the people that are out there when I meet them on the streets. You know, they ask me, "Why well, you guys sound good. You're getting professional. You're getting better and better, especially with, with John now sitting beside me because I, I was doing it alone, calling play by play. Mm -hmm. But to have, like, I don't call John like, the color man, but I mean, he's a knowledgeable in hockey. But to sit beside a professional, you know, even that's a highlight for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, uh, no, keep going. Yeah, but the languages, you know, we're trying to uh, promote languages yeah. because the yeah, languages is very important. Even the kids, even the kids, they back home, they always, you know, they said we see the uh, TV and uh, you know, and they they like that language. It, it, and hopefully that'll, you know, give the, a child, you know, maybe something to think about, you know, about the languages. Well, yeah, like if there's a kid watching and he wants to maybe do, do what you do and get into that, like what, what would you say to, to the youth out there that maybe are looking to do something like this? Yeah, well, I, I work on radio, you know, I work in, in radio, CFNK radio, we're on live stream, and that's the only time I try to promote this radio station is mm -hmm. right here, you know. Right. It, yeah, people can listen to us in Cree, myself and a, a guy named uh, Vince Nadamagan, we carry the Cree language. Now, for the child, it, you know, we keep emphasizing it starts at home. Mm -hmm. You know, talk to your children in, in your language. Either it's Cree, the Dene, or Ojibwe, or whatever language. It starts at home. But now they have a curriculum in, in schools. They can learn the language. And, you know, and that'll take them a long ways, especially when they see us. And I keep telling them, one of these days, you could be doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we're, you know, wrapping up the season and, and the cup is here, I mean, if you said you, you've seen the cup a few times, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, what's, do you remember any, any of the, the players from, you see any names on the cup that you remember from before or anything like that? Oh, yeah, you know, my team back in, you know, I used to cheer for the Edmonton Oilers when they were in the World Hockey Association right. and then, the, yeah, and then into the NHL. But my team in the NHL back, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, and they're playing tonight. So, yeah, I've seen the names here, the Toronto Maple Leafs. They've won it a lot of times, but they haven't won in a while now. It's the last time they won is in 1967. Right. So hopefully we keep saying next season, next season, mm -hmm. maybe this year. Well, and I know there's uh, the Brian Trottier Award as well that you guys have, have sort of incorporated onto the broadcasts. Um, what, what's that sort of like to see also just all the Indigenous NHL players in, in the NHL? Um, and I know you've spoken to a few of them, Brandon Montour last season. Um, just to see, you know, have Indigenous NHL players and Indigenous broadcast, what's that sort of mean to you? Well, it means a lot because, you know, it's, now we're being recognized more because of the 94 recommendations that were put forth uh, due to residential schools. But before that, you know, most of these uh, hockey players, Brian Trotche, Reggie Leach, the late Fred Sasakamus, they opened doors for the, the indigenous people, you know, to make it in the NHL. And uh, yeah, Brian Trotche's name is here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Reggie Leach and his boys, and uh, I'm trying to remember from Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, yeah, but you know, there, there's Aboriginal uh, names here mm -hmm. on the Stanley Cup, and you know, there's going to be more yet in the future. And that's uh, the name of the game is the Stanley Cup, and that's where you know, First Nations are heading towards there. Mm -hmm. And there's also the ladies too. There's going to be a, a ladies. There's a ladies, uh, the Stanley Cup's uh, relative, I'd call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that li that women too. Yep. You know, that even that, that cup is going to be coveted one of these days. Mm -hmm. It certainly is, and um, we hope to have Hockey Night in Canada and Cree uh, in the future, but Clarence, for now, thank you so much for doing this, and we, we really appreciate the time. Yeah, I'm very grateful and thankful to have provided uh, the Cree language uh, to carry the hockey game in Cree. Ninanas komun, nimantum, ninanas komau. Hey, hey. Well, we're going to keep rolling right along with these interviews on APTN In Focus. And our next guest is the host of APTN's Hockey Night in Canada in Cree, Earl Wood. Earl, thank you so much for joining me here. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. Hi, hi. So, 
we've been doing this, or you've been doing this for a little bit now, and we got the cup in the building. It's a nice guest uh, to end the season on. Um, but it's been going around for a few seasons now, the Hockey Night in Canada and Cree. When you look back on it, what are your thoughts? Umar's program, you know, it's quite nice. I mean, I can't kill the sky again, too, that I can Minä ehkä piksko on esteek. E kuskuni tekee kun näin kuin piksko on. I think uh, Hockey Night in Cal uh, Canada in Cree has been a catalyst for a revitalization. I believe that as Indigenous people, uh, we have a, a collective genetic memory and, and a language that lies there within. And uh, through all the uh, interruption that the Indigenous people have faced, I believe uh, reconciliation, you know, I, I feel it within the, within the realms of Hockey Night in Canada. It's reached out to a lot of the younger people and it's infused an interest within the language with uh, Canada's number one sport, hockey. Mm -hmm. And Earl, I mean, for yourself, I mean, how, how much have you grown? Have, have you seen growth in the way you, you do this and the way you announce? Like uh, when you look back at, you know, sort of how you've progressed over the years, well, how much have you grown as well? Absolutely. When I first came here, I was a guy with bannock with no lard on it. And now I have it, right? You learn how to put the lard on the bannock and a little bit of salt. And watching you on the news, man, to catch up, catch those things. Look at the pros. Look at the indigenous people on TV. Those are the trailblazers. Guys like you, you know, these people that have been here. And uh, I've, learned, uh, I've learned a great deal every time I come here from all the crew and all the cast here. There's a wonderful array of people here at APTN. So, no. Now, we were talking uh, a little bit off camera, and you said your team was the Edmonton Oilers, so that's who you watched uh, growing up, I take it. So, I mean, what's it mean to you to see the Cup in, in person and, and see all those names of, of people that you watched growing up? Uh, it's almost like seeing somebody that's famous, somebody that's famous from within the stories and the realms of our stories as Indigenous people. The Cup uh, is very dear to a lot of people because hockey's big in, uh, in, in uh, indigenous communities and uh, territory. And seeing this cup here, I didn't want to touch it. I took a picture of it, but I didn't mm -hmm. want to touch it or anything. Because uh, people go all their lives to, to try and even get a whiff of this. And I'm standing right next to it. So I'm going to save the picture and my grandchildren. I could prove it to them. I could tell them, man, I never played, but I touched it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a great uh, adventure. No, I'm the same way. I, I'll, I'll take a picture with it. I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to do. You know, like you said, people work all their lives to be able to touch it and hoist that. So I'm the same mindset for sure. Um, but it's still sort of unknown if if, if this is going to return next year, the the broadcast and that sort of thing. But give me your best pitch of why it should return and why it should come back. I believe the intention of people uh, and the energy is a continuum. I believe that everything is a continuum in energy. Uh, I believe that our language, uh, there lies the identity of the people. There lies the path to reconciliation with the earth and all that is. Because everything on the earth is made out of the same liquids, metals, and minerals. Therefore, everything has being, spirit. And I believe that Hockey Night in Canada, in Cree, is a catalyst to ultimately that journey of a collective, of a collective mindset and an awakening within the people. Because uh, language is uh, utmost to finding who you are and being able to allow you to uh, maneuver in this reality. I, I think if Hockey Night in Canada, uh, if it doesn't come back or if it comes back, I'm an optimist. I believe that the spirit of the grandfathers, the spirit of reconciliation and the language is like water. It's going to find a way. It'll find a way anyway to the, for, to the people. Hockey Night in Canada has allowed it to, to happen. Yeah, that's really well said, and that's a great way to look at it too. And um, what's what's been your favorite part? Of, is it something on the set? Is it maybe off the set? What's your favorite part? Is it? Uh, I'd love to know just being around everybody during these times um, over the few seasons. What, what's you look back on? What's been your favorite part? Is it offset, onset? What do you like the most about it? My favorite part of this whole uh, experience is the spiritual aspect of the language of being like a raindrop in a storm of coherency of the people within the realms of the language and all the values and the concepts that it has and uh, I feel like I've been a just a raindrop in the storm of coherency within the language and uh, within the pride of the indigenous people a lot of our young people are inundated with uh, with uh, notions and ideas of what they should be and uh, 
I think we need to be us. We need, we need to allow ourselves to embrace the beauty that each and every one of us holds because the Creator gave us a gift. We all have it. It's called intelligence, to use it in a clear, coherent, responsible manner. And the language allows for that. So my experience, my favorite thing here is meeting the people, being a part of the storm of coherency for the language, and I'm meeting people. I met a lot of good people. A lot of nice people work here at this APTN, and there's a lot of our relatives outside even. I've met them outside here on the street and just saying hello. You know, lots of good people. Earl, that's a great way, I think, to, to leave the interview. So I want to say thank you, Miigwechkin and Askamaten, for everything uh, that, I mean, on the screen, it, it's energetic. I mean, I can't help but just look, not look away at the screen when you're on and, and everybody else is on. So it's, it's just great. Thank you so much for this. Hey, hey, I like your quote, bro. Fly. Exumaga, fit the mag. Akame mo kai pu me. Ekuse. Hey, hey. Now, when Hockey Night in Canada in Cree was first announced, I had the pleasure of also speaking with Clarence Iron then about the process of announcing a hockey game in the Cree language. I just like that, that sound of the game, you know, that's why I was interested in calling play-by-play -play hockey. Iron's interest has now carried over to the highest level calling NHL games in the Plains Cree language. Announcing professional hockey is no easy task, and one would think doing it in Cree would be even harder. But for Clarence, Plains Cree is his mother tongue. Because that's my first language is the Cree. I never got to learn my English language till I was probably around seven or eight years old. You know, the English language. So, I, you know, but I still... I can still speak pretty good uh, English, I think. One challenge Clarence faces is choosing what words to use during the game, as there are several to choose from at any time. A defenseman, while I'm talking about a defenseman uh, body checking somebody, defenseman will be, uh, see there's even here, I just mentioned Utak, mm -hmm. is somebody in behind, right. Nawe is something in behind. So uh, some say Utaskanak, Utak, Utak, Utaskanak, Nawe, that's the defenseman. He also clarifies some of the most commonly used hockey terms he uses during broadcasts. Now he scores, uh, is, uh, he scores like, there's lots of ways to score. Like you can push the puck, yakuipa what? Pihtigui wipa huil, pihtigui ahkuipa huil, usi hiu, usi hiu, some say usi hiu, or like I always say, pihtigua hiu. Yeah, because we're talking about uh, the puck itself. Icing is maskomiwi pahigi wun. I maskomiwi pahigi means uh, it's uh, icing. It's something that's uh, uh, gliding on the ice. Penalty is imsuhut, uh, 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 or yeah, that's a penalty. Im sehut awiak or ipi guna min mitawi waya sui wun. Something it's a, you're you're breaking the law. <laughs> well, it means the same thing. It has different words. Uh, it's uh, isui paham wat, isui paham wat, but that could mean you know you're somebody passing the puck. You're passing the puck to somebody, I, and and obviously that uh, player scores. Clarence says language is one of the most important tools Indigenous people have. It's so important that even hockey here, you know, people listening, they're tuned in. So even though they don't really understand yet, but they'll still pick up from there. So languages are very important, and we need to we need to start using our language more in terms of even in professional sport. All right, we have to step aside for a moment. When we come back, we'll speak with John Chabon. Join our conversation now. Like us on Facebook on our APTN News page. Follow or tweet us at APTN In Focus and send your thoughts to infocus at aptn.ca.
Welcome back to APTN In Focus. Our next guest, John Shabbat, uh, was a big part in the creation of the APTN Brian Troche Most Valuable Indigenous Player Award, and I spoke with him Saturday evening about the award and all other things Hockey Night in Canada in Cree. Well, my next guest joining me here on APTN In Focus is John Shabbat. John, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Really appreciate it. No worries. Glad to be back. So, I mean, the cup is here. It's the last <laughs> Hockey Night in Canada in Cree of, of yeah. the season. Um, just what are your thoughts on, on how everything has played out so far? The first year back in a while, too, right? So when you look back on everything, just what are your thoughts it's on it? It's been great. I mean, we've had, from the very first show, not knowing where it was going. Doug Howe called us all in. We had literally five hours to rehearse three of the guys had like Clarence had called hockey we didn't know each other uh, and it just kind of came together uh, and actually came together when the lights came on we or we were rehearsed we were like oh this is gonna go badly but it just happened and it and it's been getting better every time and having a two-year break really you know the, even that coming back was it was seamless the guys are getting better all the time and so it's been uh, it's been really fun and it's been great in the fact that you know it's the language is being introduced to non-speakers, and I, what I get now is I get people, I travel the north, and I say, when's it going to be in our language? When's it going to be in our language? I'm Dene, uh, Inuktitut, Algonquin. Mm -hmm. I get these people coming up, and I said, it's in the works. I don't know, but, you know, it, it, you would think that at one point it would be. Oh, yeah, and it'd be great to see all of those. I mean, yesterday was National Indigenous Languages Day, right? So, um, but you mentioned you, you travel the north, and... and um, you mentioned a bit of what the people are saying, but what are the people saying about this? I mean, it seems like it's gained traction every time it's on the air. It, it really has. Yeah. And, you know, I get no, I get recognized more now for this and hit the ice than I do for actually being a player, right. and uh, which is fine because those days are way gone. But I was up in uh, Lac Brochet last week, and hey, you're, you're that guy on Hawkeye and Cannon Creek, mm -hmm. and so they they talk about it and they watch it. In the North, AP10 is is where they get their news. It is what the, the channel they watch. So. When they get a chance to see it in Cree, and if they ever get a chance to hear it in their own language, it would be phenomenal because mm -hmm. it, it is their go-to channel. Well, when you're traveling in these communities and people are recognizing you and they're recognizing the program, I mean, what's that mean to you to to have people that are tuning in for for something that's so, I mean, important and special, really? It really is. I mean, for me, it, it's. A, I think it's been said before, but and it's often a word that's overused. You know, honor to be here, but it is an honor. I mean. Being a player and being a coach is completely different than what we're doing here yeah. because we're reintroducing an, an, a, a language that is beautiful and descriptive and inspiring. And I think that the ability to have that spoke on, on, a, on a TV station that is an Aboriginal station, I mean, it carries the weight of the world. It, it gives the possibilities are endless to where it could go. You know, there's so many different languages and dialects that we can, we can, even if it's only for a couple of people, just to have it spoken at one time. Yeah. And I think that is what I get when I'm up north, is people are so proud to see, to have the station in one, have hockey in another live, and then have it in one of the languages mm -hmm. is fantastic. So for me, it's been, it's been more than just fun. It's been something that uh, I didn't think would ever happen. Um, and now that it has, especially after that first game, it's been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Well, since it started, I mean, we've had more of these games, and um, there's been the Brian Trotche Award has been introduced during the broadcast, and I know there's, um, it was Brandon Montour last year, and yeah. I know there's going to be another recipient, uh, right, a, a female this time, yes, right? So, yeah. um, But, like, you see all of these things happening, and, and um, like, what's that mean to just add, keep adding things, and it seems like it's growing? It, that's it, and, and the recognition of it. Yeah. I think, it, you know, you get... Trotz is a great guy. I mean, I've known Brian since my first NHL face-off for my first NHL game was against Brian Trotz. He's a guy that I looked up to as a young guy, knowing he was an indigenous guy. Mm -hmm. um, I've got to know him quite well in the, in the years we've retired. We both travel the north for different things. He was speaking, I was on the ice, but now we're with our alumni. And so to have the award named after him, he was truly, he was really, he was, he was shocked. Mm -hmm. He said, wow, that's, that's amazing. I would, I would love. It wasn't even a question of, well, let, you know, let's talk about it. You know, he was, and to this point, we did the first presentation to Brandon last year. He was, he was overwhelmed. And Brandon was also when he got it because it's a trophy that it's, not, it's nothing like any other trophy you're going to find. I yeah. mean, it's, it's as indigenous as it's going to get. Yeah. And having his name on that um, and to give it to not just NHL players, not just female Olympians, but it could be anybody. It could be a, a, a major junior kid who has a fantastic, it could be a college guy who's come out, you know. So mm -hmm. it just opens the door to every Everybody having the opportunity to win the award. Well, we're looking towards the future, and we're still not really sure uh, about you know the next future seasons of, of Hockey Night in Canada and Cree. But um, give me your best pitch of, of why this should keep coming back and why it should return. 
the excitement. I mean, you look at the possibilities. NHL is always looking to open doors to to include other people. It's supposed to be, and they talk about it being hockey is for everybody. Well, this is a way to bring that to everybody. And if you can't bring it to a language that is the oldest language in this country, then you're missing the boat. You're missing something. So if you get a chance to present it to 100 people in a community. 100 miles above the Arctic Circle, mm -hmm. and they get a chance to pride and see NHL, they start following that team or they fall in the game more. Those are 100 more fans you would have had before. So if you're looking to branch out and find new audiences, you do it by English, French, mm -hmm. Indigenous. You know, those are the languages of our country. Well, you sold me on that pitch, so hopefully you can, <laughs> you can sell some of, the, some of the ones that make the decisions. But I um, hope so. well, I'll end on an easy one. And just what's, what's been your favorite part of, of all of this? Um, the favorite game we called was just before the pandemic. Carolina and Montreal were both going after the same playoff spot. Carolina completely dominated, and Carey Price stood on his head. Mm -hmm. And he was an Indigenous guy, best Indigenous goalie of all time, top 10 of all time. Yeah. And he was, he was the story. And for me, that kind of, it kind of encapsulated our whole season. We're doing this game to highlight Indigenous players, and this guy just just almost stole a game to get his team into the playoffs. For me, the game, that was my favorite game. The rest of it is just, is just the fact that it's being done. I mean, that five years ago, nobody thought it'd be done. They did it the one time, they said, okay, we did the Olympics, and you know, yeah, that was yeah. great. And then eight years later, we're doing this. So who knows where it's gonna go? If we never do it again, it will come back in another form. Mm -hmm. I would like to see it continue. I have a great time doing it, even if they replace with somebody else. No worries. I think that it's a platform that should be spoken to and should be presented and, and kept. Well, John, that's really well said, and I guess that's a, that's a great way to leave it, uh, leave, leave the interview there. But we certainly hope to, to see it back next yeah. year, and, and I mean, it's it's just grown so much. It so really has. Yeah, it really, really has. Really appreciate the time. Thanks. No so worries. Much. Thank you. Well, you may be wondering what this stick is that I'm holding, and this is the latest award for the APTN Brian Trache Most Valuable Indigenous Player Award. And this year, the award goes to Jamie Lee Retre, who is a Métis and a player with the Canadian National Women's Hockey Team. The artwork was once again done by Two-Spirit Ojibwe artist Patrick Hunter, and this stick is just absolutely beautiful. And further to the APTN Brian Trache Most Valuable Indigenous Player Award, here is a bit of the conversation between John Shabbat and Jamie Lee Retre. How you doing? Good, how are you doing? I am doing really good. So I know this was an inaugural year of the PWHPA. Um, feelings going forward, what do you see um, from this season to next? Yeah, um, I think this year was really a staple for us. We we spent the whole season um, on the same teams, and we kind of treated it as like a season and um, and standings and so forth. So we were able to train in our individual hubs. You know, I was able to train in Toronto with a great group of girls here, and then every showcase we went to, we were put together on the same team. So there was four teams. Um, the kind of cool thing about it is we had a big championship weekend at the end, and um, we were able to go to Southern California and do that, and Team Harvey's came out on top. So can never go wrong with a championship so um they were great hosts out there and it's always nice to be in the sun and i mean looking forward i think our goal is still the same i think it's to have a you know sustainable league for uh for professional women to play in and you know obviously we've been we've been in this fight for four years now and it's been you know it's been tough but i think this year was a really big step forward and i mean the level of play was was phenomenal i think every weekend and every you know different place you went to you you could hear the buzz in the arena i think it was really really important that's awesome and um you know looking at your next month pretty exciting i mean world championships coming up again for you how do you feel about that yeah really excited and obviously with it being in canada i think um even more excited i think uh you know we got the chance to play in canada a couple of years ago in 2021 but with covid going on obviously we didn't get any fans or you know, a lot of our family in town. So, you know, this time around, it's going to be in Canada, lots of so hopefully sold out crowds and lots of family in town. And, you know, I think playing at home is always special and especially with that leaf on your, on your chest. And um, hopefully it's uh, some great crowds and, you know, it's really nice having our families there. I think that's the biggest thing for me is of course being in uh, from Ottawa and from Ontario, it's going to be super nice for it to be right in our, my home province. So um, it's going to be a lot of fun and really looking forward to it. You look at the trips that we've made together over the last couple of years. Um, did you see yourself ever playing that type of role as you went through your minor hockey and college career where you could impact a young woman's career in the sport? 
I, no, to be honest, I don't think so. I think, you know, growing up, I had some role models like that. You know, I looked up to the Gina Heffords and Carolyn Willettes and, you know, players like that. And um, I, I think, you know, I don't, I don't take it for granted one bit is, you know, the maybe even the small conversations we can have on those trips can make a huge difference. And maybe it's not even about hockey. It could be about, could be about life and could be about something small that maybe makes their, their day or their week. And, um, I know, I know as a young woman growing up, I always remembered conversations like that. So, um, I always enjoy the trips and just ma even maybe making an impact and really don't even realize it. So I think it's really important. And, um, you know, I love doing them. Uh, we're here for a specific reason. And I'm not sure if you, if you know, but, um, we last year created a, the Brian Trotche most valuable indigenous hockey player award. And it was given to Brandon Montour. And this year we're uh, presenting it to you. Uh, you're, um, You've done a great job, not just in your own career, but outside the the rank and in and, and communities and, and carrying that torch for young female hockey players. So I, I couldn't think of this year, especially a, a better recipient to somebody who 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 carries himself in a, in a way that is always inviting to to young girls to come up and talk to you and, and make yourself available to those conversations. So on behalf of APTN and uh, Hockey Night in Canyon Cree, congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. That's uh, what an honor. I think honest, obviously I've been being a part of some of these, you know, trips with you and Brian actually. Um, and uh, he's, uh, he's a great human being the way he carries himself. Uh, and I think the coolest thing about him is he just, he's very approachable and wants to, you know, share his story and anyone who wants to hold his a million Stanley cup rings, he always, you know, he always shares those and um, he's just a very humble human being and, and what an honor to, to have this award and, just trying to, you know, just trying to make an impact any way I can, whether it's small or, or big, I think it's really, really important and can go a long way. And um, wow, thank you very much. This is awesome. This past month, the Winnipeg Jets played host to the Edmonton Oilers on Wasack Night, and the night was filled with plenty of celebration of Indigenous culture. Here's a look back at that night. March 4th was Wasack Night at the Canada Life Centre as the Edmonton Oilers faced off against the Winnipeg Jets. Also in the building was Clarence Iron, the play-by-play -play announcer for APTN's Hockey and Cree. Normally, Clarence does the play-by-play -play from the APTN studio, watching out-of-town games on a monitor. But tonight marked the first time Clarence called an NHL game from the press box. The excitement uh, that you feel here, you're part of the fan base and everything here, the professionalism, you know, it's, it's a, good, a good experience. It's, it's a little bit different than being in a studio because, uh, yeah, everything, all the action is here. <laughs> it gets you exciting, pumped up. Clarence's passion for hockey and language goes back many years. Growing up, I always wanted to call an NHL game, but I, in English. But my English wasn't as sharp as my Cree. <laughs> that's, a, that's a thing, you know. But if, uh, you know, I I know how to call the game, but my my English is a little weak. But my Cree. You know, it's strong. The game was a high-scoring affair, giving Clarence no shortage of goal calls. Me, I'm, I'm old school, like I always say. <laughs> My notes, I have to write everything down. But I write everything on hand, and everything comes through memory. You know, once I study the, the names, the players, and once the game gets going, it must be a, a gift that I have as well. To call a hockey game live and to see these professionals here, you know, I kept up with the play. That's one good thing. The experience, the excitement, that, that's the thing that I like here. Yeah, even in the, it reminded me of those old tournaments I used to call Aboriginal tournaments, like the North, the North Balford Indian Mady Friendship Center, they used to have good tournaments. That one, the fans used to be loud, they got you going when you're calling hockey.
North Boomagan, right across our nation. Thank you. This experience will be one that sticks with Clarence forever. The night was the perfect combination of hockey and honoring indigenous language and culture. I'm not scared to, to go anywhere with my Cree language, that's the thing. You know, even the language itself is very important, not to lose your language. It's so important, especially here in Treaty 1 territory, you know, it's, it's an, a time for the indigenous people to be recognized, and, and, I've, and I've seen that here. All right, we have to pause from the show one more time, but when we come back, I'll speak with the executive director from WASAC about the importance of WASAC Night here and other nights celebrating Indigenous culture. Welcome back to APTN In Focus. A few years ago, the Winnipeg Jets and Manitoba Moose wore Indigenous inspired uniforms to play and for the first time the national anthems were sung in Ojibwe and Cree. Here's that story. The strong warriors girls Anishinaabe singers from Riverbank Community School took to the ice to sing the national anthem in Ojibwe, a first for professional sports. Barker is a teacher who was on the ice with the choir. She hopes others can be motivated by seeing the kids performing the anthem in Ojibwe. And it's a really inspiring for hopefully for other First Nation communities and all language speakers. We can't tell young people things are possible. We got to be able to show them, show them examples. And so one example here uh, this evening is we're celebrating the idea of reclaiming our language. And it wasn't just the anthem that was special before the game. The Jets were wearing special jerseys featuring an indigenized logo designed by a local indigenous student. Colleen Oman is the Cree language teacher at Isaac Brock School who touched on the impact of singing the anthem in Cree at the Moose game. We're recognizing language in, um, as um, a way of life now for our students. The Jets and Moose along with Wasak hope to continue sharing Indigenous culture and they are already planning next year's event. Go Jets, go! And joining us now to discuss Wasac Night and other reconciliation efforts by hockey teams is Trevor LaFort. Trevor, thank you so much for joining us here in studio. It's always great to have in-studio guests, so thank you. We really appreciate it. Um, I guess we'll start simple and basically for our audience that doesn't know, can you describe who and, and what Wasac is and does? So Wasac is the Winnipeg Aboriginal Sport Achievement Centre. Um, we're better well known as Wasac. Uh, we started out uh, as a sport organization in 1999. Uh, we started out uh, doing programming for 30 youth and we had two youth leaders. Um, we've since grown. Uh, um, this past year we had uh, uh, 120 youth leaders and provided programming to close to 5,000 youth across the province of Manitoba, uh, with the bulk of them being Indigenous. Wow. So you mentioned programming. What's the programming look like? What kind of programming? Can you get? Can you walk us through that? Um, we we involve all sorts of different kind of programs: uh, sport, culture, recreation, uh, job preparedness, education. Um, as I said, we started as a sport organization, and we've kind of branched off into to doing more stuff. Um, but I think what the legacy of Wasac is over these uh, past 20 years is uh, um, in the leaders that, that we've developed. Uh, we've got Wasac alumni that are uh, doctors, lawyers, teachers, uh, police officers, um, in the trades, in any sort of field that you can imagine, uh, there's a Wasac alumni that's probably in it. Well, that's really cool to, to hear. And one of the things that Wasac does, uh, especially recently, is uh, there's a partnership between Wasac, the Winnipeg Jets now, with, with the, um, I don't know if, if you want to call it, uh, I guess it's Wasac Night is the official title, and then Follow Your Dreams at the Moose, I believe. Yeah. Um, so that's been going on for a few years now. How did that sort of start, and, and what led to that partnership? Well, we've been working uh, very closely in partnership with True North for uh, over 20 years now. Um, and uh, that uh, started off uh, many years ago with the Little Moose program. Uh, the Little Moose program uh, provided uh, uh, programming during the school day for uh, kids to go skating. Um, 
but really the main focus was uh, on increased attendance, uh, um, educational progress, and, and really a sense of community. Um, so that Little Moose program uh, started back then and it's since grown into the uh, Winnipeg Jets Hockey Academy. And the Winnipeg Jets Hockey Academy does all of that stuff just on a larger scale. Um, I think they're in uh, uh, close to 30 schools and reach a thousand kids over the years and, and we're very proud of our, our role in that, the Little Moose and, and graduating to where it is now. And uh, we're also very proud that uh, a Wasak alumni is the director of the Winnipeg Jets Hockey Academy. Oh wow, that's interesting. And so, how important is that then for for Wasac, and and I guess more importantly for the kids that are a part of, of Wasac Night? I mean, um, Wasac and, and the Jets they bring in kids from you know all these remote communities in northern Manitoba, and and um, it, it's when you see the kids come down. I mean, they're all smiling and they're all just so happy to be a part of it. So, how important is something like Wasac Night to to the kids and and as a whole? Well, it's massive, and, and I mentioned that uh, we've been partnering with. Uh, uh, True North for close to 20 years now and it's kind of really culminated uh, in the Winnipeg Jets Wasack night and the follow your dreams day with the moose um, and as you just said, uh, seeing the kids come down, the smiles on their face, uh, taking pride in their culture, taking pride in uh, um, their heritage, uh, and getting to show that on a grand scale and uh, having it embraced by the uh, public at large is it's just really fascinating and it's really a source of pride for uh, for the youth and for us and for True North. Mm -hmm. And I see you're wearing the uh, the Jets Wasac logo and I mean every year uh, there's more Wasac stuff coming out and I saw I was at, uh, at one of the Jets games recently and then there was uh, so many of those Wasac jerseys those are amazing um, and I know you said you were in Mexico uh, we were talking off camera and there's some down there so the support has been really really great from everybody in the community like you said um, but yeah there's a lot of uh, work done like I said with the youth up north and what does it mean to them have you, have you been able to speak with them and, and maybe some of the, the uh, parents or the, the schools or anything like that like what's it mean to them to yes. come down here Yes, it, 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 again, it, it, it's fantastic for the kids to get the opportunity to come down and be something, uh, to be part of something as special as, as the Wasak Night and the, and the Moose Fall Your Dreams events. And, and, and speaking with the, the teachers at the schools, um, they, they see just increased uh, um, attention and, uh, um, and attendance from the kids uh, that know that they're going to be going down to the Wasack night game and uh, when they're down here we do a, a lot of fun things with them uh, um, we have team building events uh, getting them to know others from other communities um, it's all really a celebration and, and, and then we partner with uh, True North to have uh, events out at Camp Manitou we've had uh, John Shabbat who did the uh, telecast uh, on, on APTN uh, he came out and speak, spoke to the youth so it's really we just have a lot of positive events that happen throughout that, that whole week and uh, to see the smiles like you say on the kids faces uh, that's the biggest part uh, everything that we do at Wasak I'm very proud of when we have an event uh, to see the smiles and the joy on the people's faces is, is really uplifting and to have that on the uh, uh, biggest stage in our country in Hockey Night in Canada it, mm -hmm. uh, it really just uh, raises it up a level. Well, you had mentioned John Shabbat and our Hockey Net in Canada Creek. That, that's also part of uh, our in focus today. And um, with that, I mean, a lot of with our Hockey Net in Canada Creek, part of that is reconciliation and, and specifically in this case through hockey. Um, so with Wasek, but there's also more and more teams across the league and across different leagues are starting to embrace uh, reconciliation night. I know in the WHL, the Ice had uh, and a few other teams had their orange jerseys through warm up. Uh, the Flames did uh, land acknowledgement. The Oilers do land acknowledgement. And they also had orange jerseys. Um, for you, what's it mean to see all of these different teams starting to, to get together and do these reconciliation nights? Well, I think it's fantastic. Uh, one, just for, for the population in general, it, it gets them asking questions and, and learning more about Indigenous culture and Indigenous history. Um, but to think that uh, we may have had a, a small role to play in that other teams are doing this, uh, I think it just means that we're doing something right. Uh, this was our fifth uh, Wasak, uh, uh, Wasak night, and, and, and every, every event just seems to get a little bit bigger and better. And uh, that's really where, where the strength and the par partnership lies. 
Um, we've been working closely with True North for close to 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, but when we do something like the Wasag Night, it's countless hours of uh, preparation. It's just not the one day. Uh, countless hours of preparation between Wasac, uh, the True North team. And uh, what we're trying to do is that, that, that we make sure that we do this properly. And then more importantly, um, that it's inclusive. Um, because this event, uh, it's really all about inclusivity. Um, uh, inclusive for the Indigenous uh, um, families and youth that come uh, um, to, to share their heritage and celebrate uh, uh, their culture. But it's also inclusive uh, of the non-Indigenous families to, to see um, Indigenous culture on such a big scale. And they might not have been able to uh, attend events before, but uh, to have it on this scale uh, with the Jets, it's, it's just really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, you led me right into my next question and touched on it a little bit, and that's what do you, you guys hope comes from, from these Wasac nights? And like you said, they seem to just get bigger and bigger every year, and there's more and more happening every year, it seems like. Um, so what do you hope for Indigenous and non-Indigenous like, as an overall goal? What do you hope happens from these nights? Really, what we're seeing from it, and, and uh, we're not trying to, to do too much, um, what we're really seeing is just a celebration of Indigenous youth and culture. Simple. Um, basically, that's our, our goal for this. And, and, to, and I think, I'd like to think that we've succeeded in all the five WASAC uh, events that we've had. Mm -hmm. um, you look at uh, one of the first things that we did was, was the logo. It was right, uh, yeah. designed by uh, a WASAC alumni, Leticia Spence, uh, mm -hmm. along with the help of the great team over at True North there. And uh, this logo, like you say, it's, it's everywhere out there right now. And you see it uh, sported proudly at, uh, at events uh, in Winnipeg and all across the province, all across the country. Um, and But this is the, the, the brilliance of the partnership, is, is, is the work that Leticia Spence did uh, preparing this logo. It allowed her to get her start um, in the uh, graphic arts industry as well. So that's another side, sh side uh, shoot of something that uh, wasn't necessarily intended, but uh, it, it came about because of this partnership. And then you look at uh, the work that we've done. Uh, I think it was, I believe, the, the third Wasac night game is when we, uh, um, the, the land acknowledgement was, was already done, but uh, we added uh, the graphics and the music and all mm -hmm. of that to it. And uh, that's really been uh, something that uh, uh, really catches the eye when you go to a Jets game. And, and, and like you say, other teams have, uh, uh, have kind of followed suit. And uh, um, seeing minor hockey teams uh, sporting uh, orange jerseys and, and having their kids uh, uh, ask questions about that and wanting to learn more about that. I, I think that's one of the benefits of having these land acknowledgements uh, at every game and, and them being so, um, so prevalent. Um, just having kids ask questions about this history is, is really important and to think that we might have had a small role to play in that uh, mm -hmm. really brings us a, a, a great deal of sense of pride and it just uh, shows us that what we're doing with these nights is working. So then going into the future, uh, you mentioned that there was just a fifth uh, recently, so sort of what's uh, the plan for the future and then where do you sort of see this going? Um, well, that, that's the thing about it. We, we, we do put a lot of preparation into this, and we want to make sure that no one is left behind. Um, there's only so much time in, in a hockey game uh, to do a lot of things, so we want to make sure that uh, uh, we represent uh, all, all Indigenous cultures uh, that we can. So uh, this past uh, Wasac uh, night game, uh, we had the Dakota singer singing the uh, national anthem mm -hmm. in Dakota, and we've done that uh, uh, in the past in Cree and uh, Anishinaabe. So, um, by having more, it just allows us to, to focus on making sure that everyone is represented. Yeah. Um, every year, we, we look at some things that uh, might be uh, possible. This year, we've added a, a food component where uh, we had two jets go, right. go to uh, the feast and learn to make bannock. Uh, Connor Hellebuck uh, sported the uh, indigenous uh, uh, mask. Um, mm -hmm. So every year, it. Uh, it seems to get bigger and better, and uh, I don't know specifically anything that, that we've got on the plate for the next year, but I'm sure we'll come up with something, and, uh, and I'm sure that uh, it'll, it'll be celebrated and, and it'll be done uh, in, in a good way. Mm -hmm. And I can't let you go without asking you, what, what's your favorite part of, of everything that happens on, on Wasac Night? 
Uh, my favorite part is, like you said earlier, the smiles. Um, yeah. Just the smiles, just to see the Indigenous youth uh, celebrate their culture, be proud of their heritage, and to see that uh, embraced by the public as a whole. Just to see everyone, their smiles on their face. I was lucky enough to have guests in from out of province uh, to see this, and they were just overwhelmed with uh, how beautiful the ceremony was, uh, how uh, um, the colours, the uh, land acknowledgements, the, the, the national anthem in, in Dakota, Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we got a win this time uh, was yeah. great because we were 0-4 in the ones before. So uh, we were very, uh, uh, very grateful to get that monkey off our back for the Wasac mm -hmm. Night Games. No, I certainly uh, can, can imagine that. And uh, <laughs> Trevor, I mean, it's, it's so great to have you in studio. And, and like you said, uh, Wasac was a, kind of at the forefront, really, of, of all of this reconciliation and having these nights and, and doing stuff like that. So um, we really appreciate you coming in studio here. Um, it's great to, to hear from you and, and hear what Wasac does. And um, it's certainly a strong partnership with these Wasac. Night, so certainly look forward to the next ones in the future. So we really appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much. Well, thanks so much, Daryl. It's been uh, it's been a pleasure. Been a part of the Winnipeg Jets Wasac Night and the and the Manitoba Moose Fall Your Dreams event. And uh, like I said, we're just uh, hoping for uh, uh, better things to come in the future. All right, well, that's going to do it for our show this afternoon. Today's episode will be available as a podcast. You can listen and subscribe on aptnews.ca slash podcasts, or you can find us on your favorite player. And if you missed any of our past episodes and you want to catch up, you can find them and more on aptnews.ca slash in focus. For all of us here, I'm Daryl Stranger. Thank you so much for joining us. Miigwech, Kenan Askmitten. Have a great rest of your day.